everyone, this video is going to be part two to my advice to college computer science students series. So if you haven't watched the first video, I'll link that up here. You should watch that one to get all the disclaimers on what this whole little five video series is all about. But we're going to skip the disclaimers because I don't want to repeat myself in all five of these videos. Also, if you're new here, my name is Marcella and I'm a software engineer based in Los Angeles, California. In this video we talked about everything that you need to do in school to help you get internships and why internships are important to landing a software engineering role. In this video we're going to be talking about how to network, how to actually apply to internships, and how to prep for your interviews. This video is just going to be split up into a bunch of tips so let's just get with it. Tip number one is to go to the networking events at your school. I don't know how networking events work now in COVID slash school from home times. But in general, when I was at USC, we had a ton of networking events that were just like various workshops that were hosted by companies that come to our school and they send engineers. It's kind of like a little promo. So like Microsoft would host an event, Google would host an event. Um, they're like usually after class hours at like 7 p.m. or something. They would send a recruiter as well as a few engineers. And those events are really great just to show up your name on that list. It's really great for you to show interest in the companies that come to your school and you'll be applying and they'll be able to reference that list and see like, oh, Marcella did come to that event that we sent. She must actually be interested. In addition to showing up and expressing interest, you get one-on-one -on -one time with the recruiter. Granted, sometimes it's only for like a few minutes, but if you show up with a copy of your resume, you can go up to the recruiter, you can show him your resume. Uh, my, my biggest tip is that I ask for pointers on my resume, so I'll go up and I'll be like, oh, this is my resume, I'd love to apply, but I also would love to hear if you have any feedback for my resume. And I would do that with a lot of the recruiters, so that's how I got a really good resume. They would give me different tips, they would say, oh, this sentence is a little wordy, maybe you should phrase it like this, or, you know, they would give me different resume tips. So I'd say that was super helpful as well. So to wrap that up, bigger networking events, bring a physical copy of your resume, and if you have time, always, push yourself to go up there and chat with the recruiters at the end of the session. See, that's really my only networking tip. I don't recommend any cold emailing via LinkedIn or anything. Sometimes that can just be annoying. Sometimes it works, but I never did that. Now, when I get those messages, it can be a little time consuming to talk to every person. So I don't think they're very fruitful. I wouldn't recommend cold emailing. Tip number two is to follow up every time you talk to a recruiter. After you go to networking events or after you go to a job fair or something like that, and you chat with the recruiter in person, you should then, maybe a day or two later, you should send them a follow-up email. The go-to for me is just like, hi, Josh, my name is Marcella, we met at the job fair, and I just applied online to the Google internship for the summer. I'm super excited and would love a chance to intern at Google. Something along those lines where it's just very simple, but very sweet, you're not asking for anything too much, you're just following up, letting him know that you're still really interested in interning at Google or interning at ABC company, whatever company. Keep that relationship going because that really pays off as you go to apply, go to interview, etc, etc. Tip number three is do not send LinkedIn cold emails. That honestly rarely works and it can be time consuming so I just wouldn't waste your time with it. If you do want to talk to an engineer and are genuinely interested in getting a better understanding of how their job works, how the company works, how they like their job, how they like their team, etc, etc, I would Instead, ask the recruiter, ask a representative of the company if you've met one in person. Reach out to them and say, do you have any engineers on the team that I can talk to? And pick their brain about ABC company and just software engineering in general. I'd love to chat with them. And so they'll send you a contact. And when you reach out to that contact, you have a reputable referral. So you'll say, oh, this recruiter sent me your information and he said you'd be willing to talk to me. And you, and you can strike up the conversation that way. The recruiter is more likely to give you a contact that is actually willing to respond. In most cases, the recruiter won't send you to somebody who will just blatantly ignore you. So I think that's a more fruitful way to get in contact with an engineer at the company if you actually do have genuine questions for them. Tip number four is to apply early. Internships for the summer months, which are the most popular and most common internships, are May, June, July, and August. The openings for those for most companies actually come out in the fall, so like in November or October. Keep an eye out and make sure you apply as early as possible. The earlier you apply, the more likely you are to get your foot in the door first and be looked at first and make sure that you don't get at the tail end of them being full or anything. So apply early. And when I say early, for most companies that'll be in the fall and then there'll be some smaller companies who don't open their positionings up until the spring semester, so like January, 
February, but by the time that it's March or April, it, you're cutting it close. There's definitely companies that might still have openings, but at that point you're picking from what's left over, which can be really difficult to know what companies still have availability. So apply early. Number five is to maybe consider a winter or a spring internship. The summer internships are clearly during the summer, like, like I said, May, June, July, August, like sometime in that time frame. And then winter internships usually happen during the fall semester and then spring internships happen during the spring semester. In the winter and spring internships, most students are in class because it's the regular school year. So therefore there's less people applying to those positions and that means less competition. If you're unable to get a summer internship when everyone and their mom is applying for an internship, you should consider maybe doing a summer semester of classes and maybe taking fall off from classes to do an internship. Because like I said, there are higher chances that you'll get an internship at like a Google or Snapchat or wherever if you try to apply during the winter because there's less people applying. Tip number six, and then after this we'll get into interview prep. But tip number six is to Make sure that every time you're talking to a representative of a company, so whether that be an engineer at the company or a recruiter, make sure that you're always mindful of their time. Just get to the point. They know that you want to apply to an internship. They know you want to apply to a job. So just get to the point. I'm super interested in working at your company. What can I do to get in? This is my resume. What other experience am I missing? Just be very short and sweet with a, to the point with your questions. They'll respect that, trust me. I know sometimes some of my friends feel like that's a little transactional. That's really what they wanna do. They wanna help you get an internship or get a job at their company because that's their job. They wanna recruit great people. And if you're asking great questions like, what more can I do to be a better candidate for you? That's a wonderful question. And they're more than willing to help you. So that's my biggest tip is don't waste your time to like try to sound like you're not asking them for anything, just ask them. They're 100% willing to answer. Obviously don't be rude about it and don't expect help. Just be respectful, I guess, but also don't waste your time. Now we're gonna get into a few tips about interview prep. I actually have a whole other video that I'll link here that I made on all about how to pass your technical interview. So you should definitely watch that. And that has the best tips that I can give you. And without that video, you'll be lost. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually the best tips that I can give you for a technical interview. So go watch that. Um, but the tip, tips here are gonna just be some things that you can do to prep. Number seven, make sure you prep. Again, I have a lot of tips in that other video that you can go watch and see what I recommend for prep. The lead code specifically is a website that I would recommend to use. It's pretty much free. For lead code, make sure you just do the practice questions. There's um, the data structures and algorithms one are specifically the ones that you're going to want to do for software engineering internship and full-time interviews. When you're applying to an internship and you're a freshman, you can do just some of the easy ones because that's generally what you'll see. And then as you get older into a sophomore or a junior, you're going to be looking at me medium slash hard questions. Hard questions are probably going to be reserved just for full-time positions, but they can sometimes come up in a just internship positions when you're a junior. Definitely start with the easy ones and then as you get older you should be progressing to the medium ones and hard ones as well. Number eight is to start practicing even before you get an interview. You can start prepping during the summer, during the fall. Take it easy. Don't just cram for the interviews. Definitely like do one or two questions a day or just like 10 questions a week or something like that where you're doing it consistently. I always equate it to like going to the gym a little bit. You're just working out the problem solving muscle in your brain and you just gotta work it out a few times a week. But just like regular working out, you don't have to sit there for eight hours a day and only exercise that muscle. So again, do some small problems or just do a few problems a week and keep building up on that. If you have friends who are interning at the companies you're interested in interning, try to ask them if you can get a referral. Obviously be respectful when you ask and make sure that you let them know it's totally okay if you don't refer me, but I would love it if you could. An internal referral, definitely a huge boost to your application. Sometimes it might be difficult, like for example at Google, I wasn't able to submit any referrals because you're only able to submit referrals for open positions, but they wouldn't open the internship positions up until after my internship or after all of our internships. Various caveats like that, but sometimes you are able to in different companies. So make sure you ask your friends, even as an intern, even if they're just interns, they might be able to 
refer you. And if you have friends, older friends from college who work at those companies, or you just know people who work at those companies, definitely ask for a referral. That's a huge bonus. But again, you don't need it. I wasn't referred to any of my internships. I didn't have a referral at Google. I didn't have a referral at Snapchat. I just had no referrals. So you don't need it, but it definitely will boost your chances. This one was short and sweet. It's because I don't think you need to overdo it when it comes to the networking and all the extra stuff. I just applied online for all of my internships and I was able to get an internship at Google without a referral, an internship at Snapchat without a referral. So you really don't need to overdo it. Just make sure you're kicking butt in your school, academics, your um, student orgs, and just all around are a great, well-rounded person. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.